Welcome into Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. Tara Roberts here along with Pat Fitzmorris and Billy Muzio. And today is our ranking show. We are doing the Fantasy Pros rankings tiers for week four for wide receivers. And Pat and Billy, they're going to provide their thoughts around the players and the tiers. And there is honestly no better pair to provide analysis on these rankings because Billy was the number four overall most accurate in-season fantasy football ranker in 2022. And he has done consistently well in our accuracy competition. And Pat was the most accurate season ranker in weekly in 2020 and has consistently been among the most accurate rankers in fantasy football so these guys they're the top guys to give you that advice here this is sage advice for our wide receivers you can find billy at ff museo and pat at fitz underscore ff and you can find me at it's Terra time now before we get started again remember to subscribe to fantasy pros and turn on notifications now let's go ahead and we'll dive into these wide receiver rankings and as a reminder guys our consensus rankings and tiers can be found at fantasypros.com slash rankings. You can see the tiers there as well and on the video podcast too. So go check that out on youtube.com slash fantasypros if you are listening. All right, the top 20. You guys can check those out right there. We've got top 20, an excellent list here. Billy, I'm gonna start off with you. Is there anyone or anything in particular that kind of stands out with you here with these top 20 players? Yeah, it, it's still, I don't know if it stands out, but it's someone that I always just, I, it's, I'm, it's just taking me time to adjust to see Puka Nakua's name inside the top 12 <laughs> every single week. You know, we're seeing him along the likes of, you know, DK Metcalf and Debo Samuel and Chris Alave and Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, but can't argue with the volume the kids have been seeing, you know, consistent volume last week was the only down week really so far throughout his, his early career. But uh, it's just taking some adjustments, seeing his name near the top of the list every single week. Pat, how about you? Yeah, and in uh, fairness to Puka, like the down week, if that's what a down week looks like, I'll take it. You know, it's it's not – we've seen what the down weeks look like for Jamar Chase um, so far. And I, I do find it interesting that Jamar Chase is wide receiver five. Like the experts are not quite ready to put him back in that uh, top three circle of trust. I get it. Joe Burrow – clearly playing at less than 100%, but uh, Chase is coming off a big game that I think reassured a lot of his investors. Let me ask you guys about Calvin Ridley. So he is wide receiver 16 this week. He is going up against an Atlanta defense that's been much better against the pass than the run so far. Like, we've only seen one good half from Calvin Ridley so far this season. So is is wide receiver 16 maybe too high? Tara? It is too. Oh, oh. poor Billy. Billy, go, go Billy ahead, you want to start? Oh, I'll go. I, it's 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 funny. Um, I actually was doing a trade video of goodbye lows, and I started to write about Calvin Ridley, and then I stopped myself because I found myself struggling to find the justification. <laughs> um, yeah, it's I. We love these revenge games, and we want to kind of dive back into this, but it, it gets kind of tough because we've seen. Um, AJ Terrell has been fantastic. You know, he's been traditionally strong at shutting down and he knows Calvin Ridley and his tendencies and it's been a while, but I'm sure he can remember. Um, and it's coming off of two, you know, performances where the targets were kind of there, but I get kind of worried that, you know, even with Zay Jones out, even if he returns, you know, this Jacksonville offense last year operated in a way where they were flipping back and forth in terms of who was, you know, performing as the alpha in that offense. It just kind of depended on the matchup, depended on the week. It was Christian Kirk. It was Zay Jones over and over. And now we're looking at Calvin Ridley. And you wonder if this is, he's just in this mix now of this typical Jacksonville. Maybe this is just who Jacksonville is. And on a weekly basis, it's tough to pinpoint which one of them is going to pop and someone is going to have a disappointing week. So I do struggle with, he, I mean, he's a top receiver. So the ECR, it makes sense, but I do struggle with him and really trusting him in this situation. Yeah, that's fair. 
I have not been on the Calvin Ridley train since since preseason. You know, he, the guy missed a year and a half of football, comes back to a new new offense, new coach, new system. Uh, week one, I was looking very wrong. Week two and three, different story. Uh, and there's just, you know, as cliche as it is, there's a lot of mouths to feed in this offense. And they can turn the ball t- uh, to any receiver at any given point. And they also have a, a very reliable pass-catching running back and also a very reliable pass-catching tight end. And so um, 23% target share uh, – not going to get it done for me as a top 20 receiver on a weekend weekend basis um and that's on the season so you know when we see that dip below that number on a week-to-week basis uh this gets him closer to that wide receiver 30 range and uh i know that it's it's a it's a bit of a a shock to hear me say that he may be closer to wide receiver 30 than he's going to be to wide receiver 20 um but i do think that's where i'm more comfortable putting him i mean it's realistic and it makes sense You know, this is a solid top 20 and you look across the board and it's guys that you feel like you can trust. And he does just kind of stick out as a sore thumb of somebody who's really been struggling out of all these guys that have had these massive alpha games. And he's had two in a row that's really been highly disappointing. So I I get it. That's a that's a good one to point out there. We'll jump out of this fantastic top 20 and we'll go on to our C tier that B tier rounds out with Mike Evans and Jalen Waddle. And in the C tier, we do have somebody in particular that we want to pull out and talk about here. Uh, Jerry Judy ECR has him at wide receiver 30 and boy, oh boy, guys, um, Pat and Billy are not feeling Jerry Judy this week. I'll just, you know, tip the hat right there. Pat has him at wide receiver 37. Billy has him at wide receiver 39. I'm not going to lie. I lean on the side of Billy and Pat here. Um, this Denver offense, again, we talk, you know, this matchup is, you know, very interesting between Denver and Chicago, but it's, it's so difficult to trust either one of these teams. Um, Pat, talk to us about Jerry Judy. Yeah, I think last year people were way too high on Cortland Sutton and not high enough on Jerry Judy. And this year the tables were sort of turned. I think people were way too high on Jerry Judy and not high enough on Cortland Sutton. I might have to come up a little bit on Judy in my rankings just because the Bears are dealing with a lot of injuries in their secondary. And it's it's certainly not a good secondary to begin with. So... I only have Judy on one of my managed uh, non-best ball teams, and I am going to start him this week. I just don't have sky-high expectations because we have not seen Judy as the target hog that a lot of people thought he was going to be. Billy, how about you? Yeah, I'm on the same page as Pat here. I was much more on the Cortland Sutton train to start the season, and it just goes back to the coaching schemes. Uh, Lombardi has favored the X receiver, and Cortland Sutton plays that X receiver role. Uh, we talked about offseason about Mike Thomas having a career year with Lombardi. We talked about uh, how he had the Mike Williams had a career year with Lombardi. So Cortland Sutton is now slid into that role. Jerry Judy, of course, was banged up to start the season, but now he's been on the field and he's only seen a target rate of 14.3%. Um, and so we're not going to see uh, any really significant fantasy relevance at a target rate below 15, let alone below 20. And so I think that if we can see this closer to 25, 26%, then yeah, we start to uh, mention his name inside the top 30 again, but um, it's, it's, it's not looking good right now for Jerry Judy. And I know this matchup is, is probably favorable for him, but this game I think could be a pretty ugly game altogether. And it could be just a rushing game across the board. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of Jerry Judy this week. I'm going to continue to leave him outside the top 30 until, until he proves me wrong. And uh wide receiver 39 is probably where he's going to settle. Yeah. And, you know, we touched on Cortland Sutton and the involvement that he has and that target share you get kind of worried that you know do y'all guys have do you have any concerns around Denzel or Marvin Mims wrong, wrong Mims Marvin Mims and the impact that he's making on such a you know very limited but the talent is pulling through and you kind of got to wonder if if he is going to start eking more and more and more and is it going to start peeling away from Jerry Judy in particular Pat are you concerned about any involvement from Marvin Mims Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the Broncos have been giving all these wide receiver snaps to um, little Jordan Humphrey and Brandon Johnson and and Marvin Mims. And like Mims is getting the fewest opportunities and he is cashing in big time. And I do worry, like if they were to consolidate all these targets that are going to all these peripheral receivers for the Broncos and just give them to Mims, like if, if Mims is a regular in three receiver sets, I do think he is a problem for Judy and Sutton. Billy, how about you? 
Yeah, I'm on the same page here. Mims is is an exceptional talent, extremely fast, 4.38 speed. Uh, I do want to see him on the field more, but when he has been on the field, he's at least getting the looks. He's seen a 28.6% target rate when he is on the field, but he just hasn't been running a lot of routes. Only 14 routes run, 21.2% route participation. So same hope as Pat, want to see him on the field more. And if he does, it's going to be a trouble for the entire offense, uh, for all the weapons there, because he's been making the most of his limited opportunity. I want to pull out a player from the D tier here. And um, you guys are breaking my heart. I'm not going to lie on this one. (laughs) Tank Dell. ECR has him at wide receiver 31. Pat, you've got him at wide receiver 38. Billy, you've got him at wide receiver 47. I'm I'm heartbroken. I love Tank Dell. I I love what I've seen out of him, the impact that he's had, the continued increase in involvement. He just looks fantastic on the field. But okay, talk talk me down here. Tell me, tell me why I'm not being super high on tank Dell this week. Are we, are we, are we anticipating Billy? Are we anticipating a Nico Collins bounce back? Because he was, he was minimized a little bit in last week's offense. The game script was very interesting with Houston dominating there. What are what are your thoughts around tank Dell for this week? Yeah, this was one that I, I circled on my sheet because I wasn't too confident or comfortable with the original projection. Uh, we've seen him score in back-to-back weeks. That's definitely helped his fantasy output. Um, but I, I, I do think that he will move up in my my projections and rankings as, as the week continues and I am able to kind of find – fine tune them and, and, and clean them up. Um, but scoring back to back weeks, I don't want to chase the touchdown. Uh, we are seeing his snap share increase. We are seeing his routes increase his overall yards. Of course are increasing, but, uh, it was a really big touchdown. I mean, we're talking about a 70 yard touchdown. It kind of propped up the fantasy scores. Um, and so you take that away and it's probably more in line with where I haven't projected at. Um, I don't want to take away it because it actually happened, but you know, 18.3% target share, not a lot to, to be able to be confident in. Um, you know, snap share only 63.8%, route participation only 73%. So um, there is some concerns, but I do think his usage is, is increasing and I think it will continue to increase based upon his efficiencies and it's just a, a matter of of being able to see it a little bit more. And so I think eventually he'll come up, but as of right now, it's where I have him. Pat, you're not as you're not as far down, but you were definitely below ECR as well. Are you what are the concerns around here with Tank Dell for you? Yeah, and I have really no issues, Tara, with starting him against a, a Steelers pass defense that has given up the fifth most wide, uh, fifth most receiving yards to wide receivers so far. And, um, you know, like I, I should have listened more carefully to my Fantasy Pros colleague, Derek Brown, and uh, my Fantasy Pros slash betting pros colleague, Thor Nystrom, our college football expert, when they were screaming from the mountaintop that Tank Dell was basically uncoverable at the Senior Bowl in Mobile and, and that you should, you know, take a late round flyer on this guy in fantasy drafts. But I do still feel like he is the second best receiver on this team behind Nico Collins. And I, I just... As good as C.J. Stroud has been as a rookie, and I think he's far surpassed all expectations in his first three weeks, has looked like a veteran out there, I still cannot get two Houston receivers into my top 36, like in in the wide receiver three range. I just can't do it. So uh, Tank Dell falls just outside that range for me. Honestly, it's, it's logical. I, too, love Nico Collins as well. This was, you know... A lot of very sharp fantasy analysts were very much so in on late round targets for Nico Collins and Tank Dell just because the upside existed for both of them. So it's it's a lot, you know, it's a lot to be able to, you know, try and rank them both so highly knowing that, you know, this Houston offense does have little limitations. So I get it. I, I feel it, even though I want to support my my short brethren, Tank Dell. But moving on to the E tier. Yeah, I'm, I'm 5'2", so I always support the shorties here. <laughs> Tutu Atwell, shout out to him as well. Um, moving on to the E tier. We're going to pull one play out, one player out of there. Um, and again, you know, I guess we're, we're super, you know, I guess everybody's talking about this Denver-Chicago matchup. We just can't stop talking about it. We talked about Jerry Judy, and now we're going to talk about the other side with DJ Moore and what he is or isn't going to do against this, this Denver defense that we saw got absolutely Absolutely lit up by um, Tua Tagovailoa. I mean, just and he didn't throw that many passes, but that was a high touchdown percentage for the ones he threw. Can Justin Fields have the same impact this week? So ECR has DJ Moore at wide receiver thirty-seven. Pat, you've got him wide receiver twenty-seven. Feeling good about it, Billy. You've got him at wide receiver thirty-six. 
Pat, I'm, I'm going to throw it to you. And um, you're, what, you're feeling a lot more in on DJ Moore this week. The touchdown kind of saved him last week. But are we? what are we expecting out of him? It did save him. And he also, uh, Justin Fields probably made one of his most perfect throws, put it right in DJ Moore's mitts, and he dropped it. But that's really out of character, I think, for DJ Moore. Um, uh, may- maybe not. He has a few drops. But um, we just haven't seen him really exercise the after the catch ability yet this year where he really excels and I'm just still betting on DJ Moore's talent and and I believe in this guy and this is a guy who turned in 1100 yard seasons in Carolina with his primary quarterbacks for those three 1100 yard seasons being Teddy Bridgewater, Kyle Allen, and Sam Darnold. Basically, the only quarterback who was able to thwart DJ Moore's pass-catching productivity was Baker Mayfield early last season. So I still think the Bears are, I don't know if they're going to fix all of their offensive problems, but I think it will look better than it has so far. Fields and Moore clicked in training camp in the preseason. I do think they're going to click again. I'm keeping DJ Moore inside my top 30, and I'm starting him myself in a bunch of leagues this week. Billy, you're on uh, on point with ECR here. You've got him at wide receiver 36. What are your thoughts around DJ Moore this week? It just breaks down to the offense for me. Fields just isn't looking good. He hasn't been throwing the ball a lot. Um, he's throwing it more, don't get me wrong, but it, this offense just isn't clicking. Uh, and we're not seeing the target rate or the target share that we used to see from DJ Moore. He used to be like a 26 to 28% target share kind of guy, and he's seen the 18 18- 18% range right now, 18.1 to be exact, which is wide receiver 63. Target rate at 11.5, which is wide receiver 91. And so um, have a lot of concerns about his usage. I think if they're smart, they'll try to get him more involved because he's by far and away the most talented player on the field, uh, especially inside the receiving department. Um, and he's out there. It's not like he's not running routes. So he's he's out there running routes. He's getting his cardio in. He's just not seeing the ball. And so um, I do want to see them look his way a few more times. But until this offense – changes until we see them force the ball into DJ Moore a little bit more. Uh, I think he's going to kind of float between this wide receiver 30 and wide receiver 40 range on a week-to-week basis. I think that does make a lot of sense. Uh, we'll we'll pull someone from the F tier now, though it's the F tier, but I there are a lot of very interesting names that I like here, several that have some strong performances last week. Uh, Christian Watson, in, or I'm sorry, Marquise Brown in particular, maybe Christian Watson coming back, but Elijah Moore is the guy that I want to pull here. Uh, Coming off a strong performance, nine receptions, nine targets, a yardage wasn't there, but overall good performance from Deshaun Watson. The team looked very good against Tennessee for the most part, except for that one weird backwards pass, but we won't talk about that. But Elijah Moore, ECR, wide receiver 41. Pat, you've got him at wide receiver 46, a little bit further back. But Billy, Billy, wide receiver 20. Four. We're going to start off with you, Billy. I uh, Tell us why we are buying in big on Elijah Moore, other than the obvious of the talent. What, what's, what are you feeling about Elijah Moore this week? This is one of those defend yourself kind of statements here. Um, Baltimore is actually giving up the eighth most fantasy points to the wide receiver position. Uh, in particular, they've given up 71 points to slot receivers. Uh, and we have seen the usage that we wanted to see out of Elijah Moore. 25% target share, 25.4% target rate. Uh, he's just not seeing you know good targets. I mean, Deshaun Watson is missing him high. He's missing him low. He's missing him left. He's missing him right. I feel like a Dr. Seuss book over here. I could be rhyming about okay. how much we've seen uh Deshaun Watson struggle but I do think that that is bound to change when we have this type of volume at a receiver position uh it is it is due for positive regression from the the overall stat lines for re- receptions as well as yards and as well as touchdowns so uh, I like the chances against Baltimore giving up uh you know the eighth most of the position and I think that this is going to be a get right week for him Pat, how about you? Is this more of a continuation of uh, Amari Cooper coming off that strong performance, maybe being strong again this this week? Um, or is there a, any other issues that you're seeing with Elijah Moore? The issues, Tara, empty PPR calories. That's what Elijah Moore is right now. He is, he is PPR cheesecake and um, it, it, high calories, no nutritional value. And, and don't get me wrong, I have nothing against cheesecake. It's, <laughs> it's reason number 3,982 why I have never been asked to be on the cover of Men's Health magazine. But um, 25 targets, 15 catches, 128 yards, no touchdowns for Elijah Moore so far. He's averaging 8.5 yards per catch and 5.1 yards per target and that's with a 33 yard reception uh this season i i 
can't even imagine how ghastly the efficiency numbers would be if he didn't have that long catch. His average depth of target so far is 7.8 yards, which is almost four yards shorter than his career average. Also playing against the Ravens this week in a game that sets up as a classic low-scoring AFC North rock fight. The Vegas total for this game was 41 last I checked. I'm just not that excited about Elijah Moore this week. Yeah, I could understand that. I mean, that's... It, it's tough to kind of feel that the progress is going to be made there when we haven't seen him again. You're talking about PPR. The receptions are fantastic, but it's just not amounting too much. So I, I can I can kind of feel you on that. I, I want to be on the Billy side, but I hesitate a little bit. And I hate that because I love Elijah Moore. Guys, we're going to jump into a fun little game. Who would you rather? But before we do that... If you are ready to make a bold statement after dominating the first three weeks of your fantasy football league, introducing the bling ring from Trophy Smack, the championship ring that shouts victory. We have teamed up with Trophy Smack to bring you an epic giveaway that will take your league celebrations to the next level. To be eligible, all you need to do is subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel, your ultimate source for fantasy football insights and updates. Leave a comment below on any of our videos like this one right here, and that is it. And the best part, we'll be announcing the lucky winner right here on the channel. So don't forget to turn on those notifications. That way you will be the first to know when there are new episodes that drop and when it's time to claim your exclusive prize. Get ready to elevate your fantasy football glory with the bling ring from Trophy Smack and stand out as the true champion that you are. Subscribe, comment, and let the bling do the talking. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump into our who would you rather game. And I this one is so interesting because it's literally just the youth versus the versus the elderly. Is that mean to say? Um, love, love you, Adam Thielen. But uh, who would you rather, Drake London or Adam Thielen? Pat. I cannot believe I'm saying this because I am such a Drake London fan, but I would actually rather have Adam Thielen this week. And it's not entirely the revenge game narrative. Great, great week for revenge games, by the way. Adam Thielen against the Vikings, Zeke against the Cowboys, Ridley against the Falcons. But man, like... I just had the feeling last week I, I smashed the over on the uh, receiving prop for Adam Thielen. It was like 30 some yards, 38 and a half or whatever. And, and you know, he shatters that goes over 100 yards. You know, the veteran quarterback is going to lean on the veteran receiver. You know, Andy Dalton and Adam Thielen, a pair of gray beards hooking up. And now they're going against a, a bad Vikings pass defense. Like, yes, give me some of that. I'm I'm starting Adam Thielen in at least two leagues this week. I too was on that uh, that train. I and I wish I had gone in on it more. I kind of was like, hey, just you know, this could be a nice Andy Dalton week. It's a good matchup. I mean, you might want to start Adam Thielen, and maybe like it's kind of interesting. And then, you know, I kind of waffled a little bit on it. Didn't truly commit the way that I should. But I mean, you're right. The only thing I get worried about, I think I lean on the Adam Thielen side. But the only thing I get worried about is. Can we trust Andy Dalton two weeks in a row? I felt positively about it last week, and this is a good matchup. In theory, it should transfer over. But is he going to give us two weeks in a row, or is he just going to do that Andy Dalton thing where uh, like, we're, we're having high expectations and all of a sudden we get nothing and Thielen is left out in the cold? Billy, are you a Drake London or Adam Thielen this week? Oh man, this is I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I'm I'm choosing Adam Thielen over Drake London. Man, 2023 <laughs> comes at you fast. Uh sixteen and a half percent target share for Drake London as it getting it done. Ritter's been struggling. So I'm gonna go with the with the Red Rocket with Andy Dalton. I just think this offense is gonna move the chains a bit more. Uh and Pat touched on it. The Minnesota Vikings are actually giving up the third most fantasy points to the wide receiver position through the beginning of the season. Uh, they're giving out 105.3 fantasy points at wide too. So that's actually the most inside the league. Um, we've seen a lot of shootouts with the Minnesota Vikings. I don't think it's any different this week. I think we're going to see a pretty high score here. Um, so Adam Phelan for me over Drake London this week. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I did. We're doing it. It feels crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to put you guys to the test again with uh, Tutu Atwell or Jacoby Myers. This one is, did you think preseason that we would, no, Grant, Jacoby Myers, yes, but did you think preseason that we would ever be asking this question here of Tutu Atwell versus Jacoby Myers? 
<laughs> Billy, is this like, I mean, am I, am I crazy? Or is I mean, this is wild. Who, who would you, who would you rather? This is, I have them back to back in rankings, 30 and 31 to be exact. Um, Jacoby gets the slight edge because of the matchup uh, we have against the Chargers, the over-unders at 47 and a half. Um, and um, I think that uh, this is going to be a shootout. Jacoby's been heavily involved. And um, I, I think that the Chargers are going to look to try to stop somebody. And that somebody is probably going to be Devontae Adams. So I think that we'll see a Jacoby Myers game this week. And um, I give him a slight lean that way. But Tutu has been very impressive. Um, saw a lot of targets last week week and kind of been a pleasant surprise here in 2023 but Jacoby gets a slight lean for me any concerns around who is quarterbacking that game for Jacoby? does it matter does it matter for Jacoby Myers no I don't think it really matters I think um, they have a funnel in their offense right we see it go through Devontae Adams Jacoby Myers and Josh Jacobs um, and when you have this this clear of a path of of, of target trees and, and and routes and routes and as well as as carries um, it's it's pretty easy to project um, even if you have some of the worst quarterback play that you can imagine um, we're still going to see it funneled through the three Pat, what about you? Tutu Atwell, a high-end wide receiver, too, overall right now. Or Jacoby Myers, who would you rather? Yeah, this is really interesting because it's two guys who are fantasy viable despite playing with giant target hogs. I mean, Devontae Adams for the Raiders, Puka Nakua for the Rams. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and uh, like I do worry a little bit about the quarterback factor for the Raiders. It pushes me a little bit towards uh, Tutu Atwell here and um, really good matchups for both. We have seen that um, the Chargers have some major issues on defense and uh, the Colts, their outside cornerbacks are really young and inexperienced too so um good matchups for both but uh tara after what you said about the short guys like how can i not back you up here and go with tutu atwell so yeah i gotta go with tutu you would think i'm gonna back up tutu this is not a knock to tutu at all i just i kind of lean towards kobe myers being the safer oh. option <laughs> i know i know but again it's Be- just... betraying your fellow shorty <laughs> I am, Tara, come on I, am. I feel bad about it <laughs> i feel so bad i should i should reverse it and and support him i'll i'll tweet about it and make sure that my <laughs> support of tutu this week is well known um but yeah i guess technically it's i would rather with jacoby myers this week all right, we're going to do one more thing here. We're going to we're going to bring a little we've talking wide receivers, but we're kind of going to blend the show a little bit here. Billy and Pat, I'm going to give you three players who fall into the flex zone. And um, I'm going to ask you how you would order these players. And we'll start with you, Billy. The first one, the first grouping that we're going to do is Gus Edwards, Jaden Reed, and Joshua Palmer. Uh, it's pretty clearly Josh Palmer for me at one, Jaden Reed at two, Gus Edwards at three. Um, I love Palmer's opportunity now that we have Mike Williams, unfortunately, on a uh, season-ending injury. Uh, that opens up 22% of the target share for him. This was already one of the most pass-heavy offenses in the league. Uh, we have Justin Herbert you know, with the number one most attempts in deep balls. We've seen him with the number two most attempts in the red zone. Uh, pace of play inside the top six as well. Uh, passing yards inside the top seven air yards inside the top five. So we know this offense is going to throw the ball. Palmer steps into a wide receiver two role in this offense, been familiar uh, in this role. Uh, frequently last year kind of in and out of that one two and three role with injuries and so i think they lean on him over the rookie and palmer for me is 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 inside the top 25 of the position pat how about you yeah i think i would order it the same way that billy has it ordered and billy said it pretty well like i don't know if josh palmer is much better than a replacement level wide receiver to be totally honest and i i do think maybe we'll see quentin johnston pass him in terms of snaps and uh routes run at some point but maybe not yet probably not in in week four and you know even if palmer isn't super talented he is going to play a lot of snaps and run a lot of routes for a team that has a great quarterback and in a matchup uh, against, you know, the Raiders, who are not great against the pass. So I, I do go with Palmer here. Um, read by nose over Edwards. Maybe if it was standard scoring, I'd, I'd lean Edwards here. But I think with, um, you know, in PPR, half PPR, even with Christian Watson coming back, I think I'd rather have Jaden Reed. Yeah, I think I agree with you guys, too. By the way, um, if you have any who should I start questions, you can use the who should I start tool in my playbook. 
and any tough decisions, you can get a full breakdown of everything that you need to know. So make sure that you've got my playbook and you can access that. It'll be a great tool for you to use for all of these kind of difficult decisions here. Flex is always the tough one. We'll do one more flex question here, ranking these three players. Pat, I'm going to toss it to you first. It is Tyler Algier, Jahan Dotson, and Sam Laporta. <laughs> mm, um. Wow, I'm going to go with the tight end here, Tara. Give me Ooh. Sammy ball game. Um, and then I'm going to make it Tyler Algier, number two, Jahan Dotson, number three. Pains me to have Jahan Dotson last. Um, still a guy I really like. I just don't think we get the breakout game from him in week four against an Eagles defense that I think is probably going to turn up the heat on Sam Howell and harass him all game long. So uh, Dotson is last. Algier, you know, kind of hit or miss. But he is getting pretty consistent touches for the Falcons, and we know they want to be run heavy. But um, Sammy Ballgame, you have to like the usage he's getting. He's playing a lot of snaps, running a lot of routes, and and he's really good. I mean, ask any Iowa football fan. That was the only thing that worked for the Iowa offense last year. Um, you know, now they don't have him, and they're coming off a shutout against Penn State. So, uh, yeah, Sam Laporta here. Sam Laporta coming off that huge game. Billy, how do you rank those three? I have him in the same order Pat did. Uh, Laporta just seeing a lot of opportunity. I mean, 22.9% target share, uh, which is more than Jahan Dawson's seen. Jahan Dawson's only seen 17 and a half. Uh, and Tyler Algier is seeing not only consistent touches on the ground, but also through the air. You know, three targets week one, zero week two, but he saw three more in week three. Um, so I'm going to lean the running back over Jahan Dawson in that tough matchup. But Laporta pretty clearly the number two option inside the passing game for Detroit behind uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, and so I'm going to lean with a rookie tight end here and uh, Laporta gets to start. I think that makes sense to me. And that wraps things up for our weekly ranking show. If you want more advice from Pat, check out his rankings. Just go to fantasypros.com slash fits. You can find Billy at FF Muzio and Pat at Fitz underscore FF. And you can find me at it's Tara time on Twitter and make sure that you also check out Billy's work on player profile and you can play a profiler and you can also see some of that amazing data that Billy uses that makes those rankings so spectacular with their data, data analysis tool over at player profiler too. And if you have any questions about any lineups or trades, we are live each and every Thursday on YouTube, 3 PM EST, 12 PM EST, taking your questions. For Pat Fitzmorse, for Billy Muzio, I am Tara Roberts. Thank you so much for tuning in.